Hello students, a uh, very good evening, very good evening everyone. How are you all? I hope you are all doing good. Uh, so today I'm back at home. So the problems that we were fa facing yesterday might be not happening today. So all good, the screen is good, voice is good, uh, energy is good, vibes are good. All good, if it is good, thumbs up. Thumbs up, uh, thumbs up me. Uh, in the chat box if all things are good so welcome to the second day uh, of our workshop so Megha uh, so to publish your, you have to do it on your own it will be not done by uh, not done by the by the Edufabrica so most of the students publish it uh, on their own actually oh that's great a lot of yes yes that's that's awesome um so if you have any questions at the moment we can clear it now i'm i'm good students and how are you all uh, i will i will create this uh, the upstream uh, of of our stream to 720p by 12th of october but till now uh, we have to face it uh, with the speeds only because otherwise uh, it will stop in between with 720p. I have tried that already. So I was also bringing my photo before that also bring it stopped. So there are a lot of uh, problems with that. List of journals, yes, that's agreed. So I will ask my friend, my colleague with whom I was working to send me it again. So if somebody if you have missed your first class, please go through the previous videos. Uh, you can find the previous videos on my channel, uh, the link that I have shared today. So all the videos that is going that we have uh, done yesterday. So they are in, in parts actually. So I will divide them into one one. So like this one here. So they were on October seventh. Today is October eighth. So there are total three videos, I guess. Yes, three videos of 36 minutes, 50 minutes, 42 minutes. Molecular biology and biochemistry techniques. So you can watch them here again anytime. Just go through them. So your lectures could be conducted there. So, Bajje, you are almost uh, 400 students. So it's not possible for us to conduct uh, Zoom classes. So classes would be done by only like this. But uh, go through yesterday's workshop. So I have shared how it is done. Uh, like. So if you're working in a group, you have to send them, just one person could send it. And while we're giving you certificate, just write the review name and your, your yours name and your university name. Then on the basis of that, you will get the certificates. So that's not a problem. But yet to increase your video quality, just go to quality and, and make it to 480p. Uh, if you make it to 480p, so at least uh, the text that you're seeing will be fine. So just just increase it to 480p. So at the moment I'm just taking your questions so don't worry. So, but in, in publishing, you just have to ask the free journal. I will share the name of the list to the editor. Just write to the editor by email that you have done this this work. Uh, this is your review, and you would like to publish, and then they will they will get you know get back to you. 
yeah because this text that is here is very small but when we are uh, going for the classes it will be fine then so don't worry much about it at the moment text will be bold and okay uh, at the moment it will it will be at 480p i cannot change it because if i do it uh, things will be totally what we are having streaming at the moment it will be not happening anymore so so for the internship students it is compulsory to uh, uh, send us review uh, that is one of the criteria yeah yeah uh, so 10 days from from yesterday onwards and 5 days afterwards 15 days in total so Yes, you will get an individual certificates even though if you work in the group. But you have to mention in the review article which person has done which which work in it. So that is a uh, main criteria. My calendar is somehow Yeah, it is open. So if we have started from seven, so so ten days would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So then five days afterwards, one, two, three, four, five, twentieth. 20th October is the final date uh, of submitting your review. 20th October. Twentieth October. Uh, is the final date for submitting your review. So you can take your time and do thorough research and yeah. I already did actually the internship topics in telegram yesterday plus ask somebody in the group so they can tell you so please it's my humble request don't uh, use uh, foul language here in the group uh, otherwise if we find some students doing some foul language we will not provide any any certificates because of ill behavior so we are very strict we are very strict about this so just just have a sensible talk uh, on over the youtube so our uh, everyone is here to check it what's going on So writing a review is enough. It's not like very compulsory that you have to publish. So if you just send me your reviews, our main task is that you get familiar with writing review, how it is done. Uh, just get into the group, uh, the students that you are in with, and and get to learn from uh, group study. So that's why I was suggesting it to everyone. Yeah. Yes, yes, you can you can attach internship letter in C V also. 
that's no problem. So assignments would be total 10 assignments uh, with each day work uh, of two days uh, things. So at least read, read at least read ten uh, review papers before you go ahead, and it could go to twenty papers also. So read as much as possible. The more you read, the more it will be nice for 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 the review article. Let's go through as much as papers you can. So, submitting the assignment is not compulsory but if you send us it will be nice for you also for us also to keep and record so that's that's uh, that's the main thing so if you have any other further questions shall we start for the today's workshop if you have not any further questions uh, so almost answered most of your questions I guess Let's start then, students. So as per uh, our day two, uh, in the first day we are done with the basic principles of MBBT. So in the day two, we will be dealing with uh, cell culture techniques and microscopy. So these two parts will be touched uh, in order to start. Just a second, students. My dog is here. So today, uh, cell culture technique and microscopy. So first, so some basics about microscope. Because once our basics are clear, we can go for further uh, advanced part of it. So microscopes, so I hope you have used them in your life uh, whenever you were in your school time uh, or in the college time to check microscopic level of uh, items or specimens such as RVCs, crystals, microorganisms, soil particles, uh, yeast, uh, milk, yogurt, 
uh, onion peel so all parts at the small uh, microscopic level so you have you have seen it you might have seen it so it's magnify the objects uh, help scientists to study objects living things to uh, see small with the naked eye so this is the basic parts of a microscope so you can see here is the body tube ocular lens is there uh, nose piece uh, is there with the objective stage clips are there diaphragm is there light is there uh, base is there fine adjustment is there coarse adjustment is there stage is there arm so by this uh, okay. and you should also carry your microscope with one hand uh, holding the arm or under the uh, other arm with under the base so you hold it with the both hands whenever you're carrying it there are three types of microscope simple microscope which has mainly one lens compound microscope has two sets of lenses and it can magnify uh, 100 to 200 items larger than that and also there's electron microscope which can magnify objects up to 3, 300,000 times uh, they do not use lenses but use electrons to enlarge the light. So in the parts of microscope, first comes the ocular lens, the lens of the microscopes that, that we look through. Then there's a coarse adjustment, then large knob, uh, like large knob here, this one, uh, that you can turn to bring the objects into focus. Uh, then fine adjustment is a small knob on the microscope that brings image into focus. So like this one. Small coarse adjustment. This is ocular lens eyepiece. Arm, then comes the arms, the part of the microscope uh, sporting the body tube. Then the body tube, uh, the part that holds the eyepiece and the objective lens. This is a body tube. Then the nose piece, so this is the arm, body tube, and here is the nose piece, the part at the bottom of the body tube that holds uh, the objective lenses and allows them to be turned on. So there are high power objective lenses, the lens that magnifies the objects the greatest amount of 40x, usually to 40x. There are low power objective lenses where the magnification is with 3x to 4x only. Uh, middle power objective lens will have objective lens of 20x so within that we have three different lenses with 10x 40x and 3x so we can magnify as per our needs that we are looking for the flat part below objective lens where the slide is placed then clip is the one where the holds a slide in and diaphragm is the part that controls the amount of light entering the view so diaphragm is here, clip is here holding it, and stage is this one. So this is a proper nice skeleton of your microscope uh, being explained in these slides. Uh, the light source, the lamp under the stage that sends light through the objective view. So from here, uh, your lights are being sent to the upwards. From the bottom part, that supports the rest of the microscopy. So this was, uh, we are done with the microscope parts. So here is our now quiz time. So we know which part is which. So on the right hand side is the ocular lens. On the left hand side is body tube. Then comes the nose piece, objective lens, stage clips, diaphragm, light, arm, stage, coarse adjustments, fine adjustments, then base. So that's the basics uh, of your microscope. This is the field view uh, in the area where we see uh, at our, our, our specimens. So mostly they see uh, upward down uh, like this. Whenever we see things in it, uh, they're upside down actually. So if E is like this, then we see the upside down space. So in 70x compare magnification is 7x this one and 10x would be this one. So we can see better details with the hard map power magnifications but we cannot see as much of the image then. So out of these two maze, which one is the higher magnifications? This one or this one? 
So this one is the hard magnification of this image. This one is the hard magnification of this image. So to calculate the power of magnification, multiply the power of ocular lens by the power of the objective lens. So whatever the power of ocular lens is, you multiply with the power of objective lens. So ocular lens is, if it is 10x or 40x, what are the power of magnification for each objective uh, we can have on our microscopes? So find, to find the power of the lens, it is found uh, on the side of the lens and magnification power uh, for lens is always identified by the label of x, 10x or 1000x. So multiply the power of eyepiece by the power of objective lens. So if eyepiece uh, is 10x and objective lens is 100x, if eyepiece is 10x, you multiply by 50x. 10x, uh, then you multiply by 40x. So in this way, uh, you can calculate uh, various uh, power of the lenses in that way. Uh, objects appears as I told you upside down backward. We see the backward part of it and upside down. Movement appears to be in opposite direction than the actual movement. Uh, actual movement move slides appears to move in that case. So if it is E then it's up, up, upside down and backward what we are seeing it there in that case. So we don't have microscope at the moment, I wish uh, we could have it. Uh, we could have done some experiments like this and what it's unfortunately we don't have. So, so this is just one assignment that we used to in the lab, but we cannot do it. So this is to making a wet mount slide. Use a dropper to place a drop of water on the center of slides and use a tweezer to lay specimen on the drop of water. So use you, you use this tweezers to lay a specimen on the on the on the water. Then gently touch the cover slip like this and drop of water to cover the specimen on the water. Then you put on at the 45 degree angle and you just drop it on so that no less air bubbles will come. So how to make wet mount slides? Get a clean slide, cover from a teacher, place one drop of water, don't use too much of water, will edge of the mask, place the edge of the cover on the side of the water glue, a cover slip, you hold it cover slip like this at 45 degrees Celsius and lower it slowly. Then place the slide on the stage, view its first other uh, banded objective. Once you see the image, you can rotate the nose piece to the single slides with a different objective. So thank you very much, uh, students. Uh, that was something very short uh, introduction about microscope, uh, which you might be aware of, all of you, but I still pertain, pertain it. I still bring it to, you, to your notifications. So some might be not even aware of, they have not even seen the microscopes. So just want to bring it uh, in, a, in a good way. So this is one cartoon showing you mutant genes in the microscope. So this is gene and it, is, it has three legs uh, having a mutant uh, part of it. Just funny, uh, funny story from the funny life of science. So let's uh, go for the second part. Uh, light and electron microscope. So students, uh, let's continue with the light and electron microscope. So here we can see a replica of Leeuwenhoek uh, microscope constructed in 1670s. Uh, it's from the from that. In that, in the earlier time, we used to have these kinds of uh, specimens uh, of, of, of microscopes in earlier time. And this is a replica of uh, Kulipper tripod microscope uh, built by uh, Edmunder Kulipper, uh, Kulipper, Kulpepper, sorry. Uh, this, this is also another replica of the same. 
so our this part of uh, this spectroscope today uh, will be covered according to this content where we will discuss types of microscopy uh, under which there will be basically two microscopy light and electron under light we will deal with bright field dark field phase contrast polarizing dic epifluorescence confocal laser and scanning electron microscopy they would be scanning and transmission and uh, specimen preparation light microscopy scanning electron microscopy transmission electron microscopy so we will all discuss uh, one by one uh, in each part So before we start, any questions students you have? Okay. So let's start with the content. So microscopes have been essentially tools of cell biologists. Uh, this tutorial provides a brief uh, overview of types of microscopes commonly used in the biological studies. Uh, there are two broad types of it, that is light microscope and electron microscope. So this is an old monocular uh, bright field microscope with a fixed stage and mirror uh, showing it up here. So light microscopy, bright field microscope uh, is the most common general use of microscopes. Bright field microscopes are named because the microscopic field is bright while the objective being viewed as dark. So they are simple designs. Uh, light is directed at a specimen uh, to form image. Unstained specimens have poor contrast. Stained specimens show excellence contrast, whereas ideal for the stained contrast, bacteria, uh, cells, tissues. Uh, bright background, dark specimens, tungsten or halogen light source. These are the various, uh, various characteristics of a uh, bright field microscope. So this is binocular bright field microscope with movable stage, dioptic adjustments, condensers, RS diaphragm, and built-in light source. So these are used as clinical research and student microscopes. So this is the bright field images. So this is a section of cut tissues containing ciliated parasites. So here we have ciliated parasites inside the gut. Uh, this is the stained blood cells in the peripheral blood smear. And the blood smear is one of the stained uh, blood, sample, blood cells we have found. And this is trichomonas flagellate in the third figure. Like with the whole spiral outside. So this is the basic design of bright field microscope has been modified uh, into inverted microscope. So your microscope could be in inverted shape like this. Also being of cells in flask, well, uh, well plated, other deep containers that do not fit between the objectives and stage of standard uh, bright field microscope. So your source of light is from the top. You are watching your images from here. And, and your objectives uh, lenses are downwards. So this is inverted microscope. So light source is above the specimen. Objective lenses are located beneath the stage. And at the bottom is the objective lens. Then comes the dark field microscope, DF, uh, that creates a dark background to allow viewing of the small unstained objects such as motile bacteria that are quite difficult to see in the bright field. The central portion of the light is blocked so that only oblique light strikes the specimens, are scattering light rays that then enter the objective to form the image. This is from the 19th century, bright specimen, dark background. Light here mainly scattered by the specimen bypasses the objective, therefore making the field dark. You can see very small objects, but resolution is variable. 
high contrast, good for unstained, live and motile specimens. So this is the dark field microscope. Here we can see uh, some images from the same microscope. So this is algae uh, hydro uh, dicton reticulum viewed with a dark field microscopy. The left side, and this is the lepto spira, uh, which is a spiral heat viewed with a dark field microscope. This one. Then comes the phase contrast uh, microscope. Uh, which converts your differences in the refractive index in the specimens to differences in the image brightness. The central portion of the light source is blocked in this case, creating a ring of light from the condenser that illuminates the specimen. The light wave refracted by the specimens are slowed by the phase retardation plate, increasing the difference in the wavelength between the refracted and unrefracted rays. When the refracted and unrefracted waves are focused, they produce interference due to difference in the wavelength. And this is seen as a difference in the brightness of the specimens. And this technology is from the 1940s with a high contrast and good resolution. It's good for bacteria, flagella, cilia, or vanilla, such as mitochondria. Good for unstrained or live mounds. Uh, and we cannot, it's, it's very hard. It's sometimes uh, we can see some artifacts also. So we have phase objectives and even annular ring at onwards. The phase contrast microscope. So phase contrast uh, is compared with your DIC image. We will see what is the DIC later. So on the right side side DIC, on the left side is the phase contrast. So we can see the phase contrast, the images are much, uh, much, much brighter and, and, and differences uh, there's a difference in the refractive index in various regions of the cells count for the contrast in the So there's a various differences in the refractive index of the cell. Based on that, uh, the phase contrast microscope is based on. And you can see very nice bright images uh, with the help of it. Then comes the polarization microscopy, uh, which detects specimens that are biofringent. Uh, uh, that is having the characteristics of double refraction. That is velocity of light refracted, uh, velocity of the light refracted by substance is not the same in all directions. Specimen is placed between the two polarizers crossed at 90 degree to each other, one in condenser, one in objective. Then there is a bright image and dark background. Uh, this is used for substance uh, with highly organized molecular structures such as crystals, minerals. Uh, this could be can be quantitative also. Then comes the polarizing microscopy images. Many crystals and windows display characteristic patterns in polarizing light. So on the left, uh, we can see a Martian metroid that has been grounded to the 0 0.3 millimeter depth and viewed under polarizing microscope. So top right is the bright view view of the renal epithelial cells containing fat globules and the bottom right is the high magnification with the same cells viewed under the polarizing microscope showing typical Maltese cross like this one. Maltese cross formation in the fat uh, in polarized light. Then comes your epifluorescence microscopy. Uh, so these are the detection of the molecules and ions within the cells uh, that absorb short wavelength of the light emit longer wavelength. Uh, it's barrier filters and diacrotic prism uh, then and it uses UV light as a source of uh, light in this case or we can also use mercury as xenon arc lamp. High contrast, high resolution images, special force and dyes used to locate location specimens. Uh, there's a black background, black stain specimens, no condenser required, uh, lights come from a post specimen, and multiple fluorescent probes available in that case. And we detect small quantities, molecules, and can use antibody staining uh, techniques. So here we have a UV light source on the background, and there's a barrier filters, uh, and dichroic prism is also there.
So here we can see uh, very nice images, immunofluorescence images uh, with the antibody bound to the molecule as secondary antibody labeling it. So here immunofluorescence images of tetrahymena, acylated protozoa using fluorescent dye, fluorescein isothiocyanate, which emits green light. So left one is the anti-vessel body uh, with the antibody. Above right is the cell stain with the antibody against cell membrane surf surface antigens. So this compares this uh, information uh, using the fluorescent technique with the help of bright field view of the tetrachromium. Uh, the far right uh, is the tetrahymena stained with the hematoxylin. So this is a bright field field view, and this is the epifluorescent images. So that's the advantage of epifluorescent. You can see the fluorescent lights, uh, fluorescent uh, labeled secondary antibody molecules. Uh, in a different way. So like this. This one is showing the outer surface. This is showing the ciliated part of it. Uh, different way. And this is the epifluorescent image which is showing the metaphase in the lung cells. So three fluorescent probes specified for the DNA, carotene and tubulin uh, are, are used. Blue used for the metaphase chromosomes. So these are your metaphase chromosomes. Red is used the keratin, keratin filaments, the outside ones, and the yellow the spindle apparatus made of microtubules. This is the spindle apparatus. So this is how uh, your mitosis is happening uh, in lung cells, and as shown by the epifluorescent, uh, epifluorescent microscope. So then comes the differential interference contrast microscopes, uh, also called Normarsky. Uh, differential interference contrast microscope, also called Normarsky optics. So they resemble but more sensitive, uh, give higher resolutions, uses polarizing lenses like the polarizing microscopes and therefore can be quantitative. The halogen light beam is polarized, split by the beam splitter uh, and the pass through the specimens. The split beams are uh, recombined, uh, recombined uh, by a second prism in the objective. Any change in the light wave due to the passage through the specimens cause interference and hence you can check your uh, specimen structures. So they are basically producing 3D structures, excellent resolutions. High NA, high contrast, unstable specimens you could it's good for live mounts, uh, detect changes in the refractive index of specimens. So actually, uh, most of your microscope could be used for uh, live microscopy, even including your bright field microscope. Irrespective, you have a very good lens in there, and whatever you are checking, you are able to see it very nicely, and and you can you can produce some some images which are publication point of view or predicted. So just take and care take care of that at time. So this is your mercury lab, uh, recombinant prisms are there, uh, beam splitter, uh, this Washington prism, it's, it's then in the bottom and polarizing filter at the bottom also. So making it together at DIC the differential interference contrast microscope. So these are the images that we have seen from the DIC image of the cricket overall uh, over here showing O sites, O sites nuclei, O, uh, this is nuclei, and this is B is the Balbini bodies. These are the Balbini bodies, Balbini bodies, also called as mitochondrial clouds. So, three dimensional appearance we see a 3D images of the cells, uh, and bottom is the epifluorescent image of Balbini bodies. So, this is the epifluorescent images stained with the rhodomine 1, 2, 3 fluorescent stain for specifically uh, for the mitochondria. Um, yeah. Then comes your confocal uh, laser scanning microscope. Uh, a laser is a scanned, is a focus at a plane in the specimens and scans the specimens in the horizontal plane. Uh, only light from the plane of the focus reaches the detector and uh, the scan image is digitally recorded images from the consecutive uh, focal planes can be recorded in that case. And you can, uh, 
you can consider to have a 3D images at that also from this. So here uh, we don't use light, we use laser called argon laser or krypton laser which is inert. In our, uh, we have a very high resolution image, uh, sharp images, high sensitivity and eliminate spectral of interference in this case. This is a pyrot and focal microscope showing a fluorescent images uh, on the monitor. So that's the beauty of a confocal microscope. So here you can see a bright field trichomonas posterior flagellum uh, can be seen here with exostyle unstained. So on the left image composed from 13 optimic uh, sections of trichomonas immunostain with antitubulin and fluorescent isothyanosinate that is FITS. So green structure consists of microtubules and PF is the is the posterior flagellum uh, and AF is anterior flagella, AF is anterior flagella, C is costa here and anadaro is the exostyle. So the images are compared with the bright field and the confocal microscope. So you can see there's a huge, uh, uh, you can see much better images, much confined figures uh, and more structured in the help of confocal images. So uh, we are done with this till now. So let's take a uh, some break now here. So we meet at uh, us at 50, 550. So to continue with further lectures. So if you have any questions, Okay, so I see you in a uh, few minutes, in five minutes or so, in fact, 50. At 5.50 we see us, I will continue further.
so students so are back. Now we discuss about uh, vector microscopy, uh, that is scanning vector microscopy and transmission vector microscopy. So we discuss these two parts. Uh, the scanning electron microscopy uh, is a fixed dehydrated specimens, specimens that are mounted on the stock surface coated with a gold, platinum, or rhodium. The specimen is placed in a vacuum and electron beam is scanned back and forth. Over it, electrons that bounce off the metal coated specimens surface are collected and converted to a digital image and sprayed on a TV like monitor. Um, so this is focused using a magnetic field. Uh, SCM is a 3D image, gives information about the external topography of specimens, much higher resolution, magnification possible than this, uh, than the light microscope. So top left uh, and top uh, right uh, are the uh, scanning electron scope images and top bottom are the DIC microscope. So you can see the difference. So how Lotrachomonas um, and Tetrahamina on the right hand side, uh, there's a huge difference between left and right. So they are just shown in simple and here we can see a 3D image with all the structures on the top and very well defined structures also. Here is our mirror. Whereas your transmission electron microscopy, TEM, uh, is a fixed dehydrated specimens are embedded in their resins, are then sections stained with heavy metals such as uranium and lead, inserted into the electron column in the microscope. Electron beam is absorbed or deflected by the heavy metal stains, shadow are costed onto the film. Uh, Uh, or at the bottom of the column. So there are 2D images with these internal cell structures, high resolution, high magnifications. Electron beam is focused by the magnetic field. So comparisons of the team uh, TEM and SEM. Uh, as you can see uh, transmission electron microscopy in the right and scanning electron microscopy to be on the left. So transmission seems to be uh, more, uh, uh, more, more 3D, more, more better structures we can see in it. Uh, whereas uh, in scanning we can see also images but in a more uh, lighter plan, plan, uh, planner. So here we can see trichomonas on the left hand side. Um, on the left hand side we can see trichomonas uh, on, the set, on the left side uh, note that SEM details of the external structures are visible while in the TEM uh, we are TEM on the right hand side so here we can see TEM internal structures are revealed uh, with the Golgi, hydrogonomos, flagellum, recomb recombinant flagella so all uh, sections are uh, all the different parts of your cells are being defined here uh, in the right hand side where on the left hand side it was not like that before so this is uh, TAM images uh, of, of rat liver left and pancreatic echinar uh, cells on the right so here we can see that uh, the nucleus Uh, the nucleus, uh, uh, the nucleolus, this is the nucleus inside nucleolus, uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum, CV, cell boundaries there, cell uh, zymogen granules, mitochondria are there, so all these are rough endoplasmic reticulum is there, so we can see a defined manner of the cell structure. Here we can see also cell boundaries uh, in the pan uh, pancreatic cells. 
Pensamos on Reynolds. So how this we have discussed so far about various microscopes, uh, the light uh, field microscope, bright field microscopes. Uh, we have discussed about uh, uh, light uh, scanning electron microscope, tunnel uh, electron microscope, transmission solid electron microscope. Now how to prepare uh, their specimens, how to prepare for each kind of uh, microscopy there's a different pattern of preparing your specimens how you can make them so to do so uh, it's it's quite uh, as per your demand you can draw it for example if you use light microscope then you have to create a light mounts uh, by using a vital stain and then you can view it or you can fix it with the help of histology that is you fix it dehydrated infiltrated and embedded sections mount stain and then you can view it uh, this is the all uh, sections of uh, microscopy so live mounts to view organisms tissues or cells in as is close to the natural state as possible unstained live mounts are used viewing time of live mounts is limited unstained specimens have low contrast Supra vital stains may be applied to the provide more contrast or identify certain components. These are stains that are not harmful to the living cells. Then comes the uh, uh, fixed specimens uh, to study of the tissue. Uh, the specimens may be preserved using chemicals such as formalin, acetic acids, ethanol, and methanol, and fixation mobilized molecules such as proteins and lipids. Fixed specimens are dehydrated by serial transfer through an ascending alcohol series to 100% alcohol. Specimens are infiltrated with melted paraffin, paraffin substitute or plastic uh, placed in a, mold, uh, in a mold to, to be hardened. So this is the specimens that are cut into the thick sections using a steel knife or razor or an instrument called microtome. So this is a microtome here we can see. So it's it's uh, the blade is keep cutting it and you can put your specimens here, specimens holder and this is your knife cutter, knife holder and will keep cutting your samples like zup, 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 and keep throwing them into the liquid here and you can place them on the glass lights and place them for further experiments. Then further sections are mounted on the slides, stains to achieve contrast to identify cell structures or components. Then you can view them uh, microscopically uh, how, how they look like. Many variations in techniques are used to prepare specimens for the light microscopy. Some omit the dehydration, infiltration, embedding and sectioning steps and use aqueous staining systems for viewing whole mounts. Freezing may be used instead of chemicals to fix tissues that need to be examined quickly or that have components damaged by the chemicals. Examples are frozen biopsies, tissues in which heat level Structures are to be stained. Frozen specimens are sections using cytocryotome, a microtome in case in freezing chambers. Permanent slides may be made from the paraffin sections but not from the frozen sections. Then this is schematic for the preparing specimens for the scanning electron microscope. This is fixed, dehydrate, mounted on stubs, sputter coat, observe. So all these uh, are the methods for that to check for your fixed scanning electron microscope. Then fixations are used for uh, glutarahel fixatives are used such as glutaraldehyde, parafoldimahide, osmium tetroxide, you can use it. For dehydration, uh, you can carry out with ascending alcohol series to 100%. Uh, one percent alcohol, uh, no water, then to organic solvents such as acetone or propylene oxides. Specimens for the SEMs may also be processed in the critical point drying, uh, uh, drying apparatus. So all these are possible in that case. Uh, specimens are mounted on the aluminium stubs using sticky tapes. So this is a type of stub. So applying specimens to the stubs arranged in a holder. So then the, in the holders, so we arrange them like this and scooter coats coat the specimens with the gold, radium or rhodium in specific special chamber to cover the specimens with a 10 to 20 thick metal, uh, metal layer. 
then you can check them under SCM and observe on video display. This is for TAM, for TAM you fix, dehydrate, infiltrate, section, apply section to grid, stain, observe uh, your, your results. So this is fixation specimens are fixed in a glutaraldehyde or uh, paraformaldehyde, glutaraldehyde mixtures followed by osmium petroxide. So dehydration is com accomplished by uh, carrying the specimens through an ascending alcohol series 200%, then to the organic solvents such as acetone or propylene oxides. Specimens are then infiltrated with an epoxy or plastic resins and placed in a plastic mold to be harder. So this is ultra microtome. We can see here if you section your specimens. Uh, So you can section out your uh, microtome, get a thin section of your samples. So you can see uh, glass or diamond knives are used to cut the ultra thin sections. So this is a diamond knife here you can see. So it's cutting very nice sections of your uh, ultra thin sections around one millimeter wide. And it has a knife edge. Very nicely your work is going on here. So sections are transferred to tiny metal grid for support uh, the function of glass medium so this is a close view of the grid so grid and forcep so we put with the help of forcep onto your sample uh, heavy metal stains such as uh, uranyl acetate and lead citrate are applied to make certain structures electron dense so grids are then inserted into transmission electron microscope and are observed then so this is the electron column Specimen uh, are inserted here, additional images are displayed and phosphor and plate for the image. So that's it uh, for the topic of uh, microscopy. So students, so I can show you some images from my So here, uh, the images that you are seeing here on the left hand side, they are the neonatal red cardiomyocytes like uh, from the uh, three days born, we extract the cardiomyocytes from the mice, we get the heart out of it and then we place them on the culture plates and we grow them for seven days. So they are the primary cardiomyocytes actually and we check them under bright field inverted microscope and with a different concentration of H2O2. Uh, to see the effect of that drug, what what is happening to that? So here you can see uh, in the control, uh, your micro your cardiomyocytes are being. So I made a video, live video, live microscopy. So they are all beating properly, but in hundred micromolar they are also fine. So that means under micromolar of concentration. Is, is suitable for the cardiomyocytes, but at thousand micromolar of concentration, they they didn't move so much as compared to others. At ten thousand, we saw a lot of debris. Cells started to die. They started to produce some bubbles inside of the cells, and, and nothing is coming out of them. So this is the data. Then, with the help of uh, MATLAB base script data, uh, we produce some results that lags into contraction ratio. So we saw with the, with the increase, uh, there's a decrease in the uh, relaxation ratio was happening. So this is how the microscope could help you uh, in your in your um, work. So any questions, students? Yeah, I showed you that you can check. Uh, to see the uh, 
interpretation you can calculate relaxation is a contraction ratio you can check uh, mainly you have to check whatever the drug that you're using or you have a knocking mouse knock out mouse what are the specific things that you are looking for whether you have cancerous um, mouse cell or one is not cancerous so in the cancerous cells how the morphology of the cell types changes so you can calculate that also so all all these things matters so i will send you the ppts just now then on on viber on telegram sorry There you go. We will have them soon with you. So now we are done with the microscopy. Now let's touch the part of cell culture. cell culture in vitro is a brief history uh, so in 1885 uh, rocks maintain embryonic chick cells alive in saline solution for a short length of time then alexis carroll cultured connective tissues and showed heart muscles tissue contractile over two or three months in 43 arrel at all produced continuous red cell line and in 62 Uh, Bonnet C C et al. Uh, published methods for maintaining differentiated cells. In the 1970s, Gordon Sato et al. published the specific growth factors and media requirement for many cell types. In 1979, uh, Bottenstein and Sato defined the serum-free medium for neural uh, cells. But in 1980s, today till now, uh, tissue culture becomes less of experimental research field. and more of widely accepted research too applications of cell culture techniques study of cell behavior without the variation that occurs in animals artificial organ development and in vitro propagation of virus vaccine development drug effect recombinant dna technology characteristics of cells can be maintained over several generations leading to a good reproducibility between experiments cultures can be exposed to reagents radiochemicals of drugs Uh, defined concentrations finally it avoids the legal moral and ethical problems of an animal experimentations so limitations of cell culture have uh, have to develop standardized uh, techniques in order to maintain healthy reproducible cells for experiments uh, take time to learn aseptic techniques quantity of material is limited redifferentiation and selections can occur and many of the original cell uh, mechanisms can be lost and cost of media maintenance of cell lines have to maintain while doing so so some basic terminology in the cell culture organ culture cell culture primary cell culture a three dimensional culture of a uh, on this aggregated tissues retaining some or all the features in vivo cell cultures are the one which are long uh, longer organized tissues whereas the primary cell cultures as i showed you uh, with respect to new new natal red cardoma set that i did during my phd in germany uh, are are the one that you just get it from the specific tissues at the primary level so safety level has to be maintained some hazardous substances that can cause cancers uh, that we have to avoid them which could develop uh, damage to the fetus tetrogenic mutagens you have to avoid gentamicin thapsigargin possible tetrogens hydromycin possible carcinogens streptomycin mutagens so these are all the things we have to maintain while doing experiments at the cellular level so use of cellular uh, culture area uh, uh, do 
not bring your uh, friends in with you. Do not eat, uh, drink, or smoke in these areas. Do not use mobile phones. Do wear lab coat. Uh, do wear disposable uh, gloves. But make sure that you dispose of them in the correct way before you leave the area. Do not wear disposable gloves in the corridor or right up areas. Basic equipment, horizontal lamina uh, flow cabinets, these provide the most sterile environment for the cells, but do offer no protection to the operator. Uh, the most sterile part of the cabinet is at the back, that is centrifuges, and there are the centrifuges in each cell culture area, which are uh, uh, refrigerated, human derived cells to be uh, centrifuged and sealed rotors. So, these are the basic equipments that you require. So contamination could happen because of mycoplasma that has to be taken care. Uh, this can lead to the development of antibiotic resistance microorganisms. Cells are most vulnerable to contaminations whenever aseptic techniques is bad and the culture becomes infected with the bugs. So how you could isolate cell lines in vitro culture? You resected a tissue. You get the cell or tissues of in vitro. You make a primary culture, then you make a subculture and make a secondary subculture out of it. And from the secondary culture, you make cell lines. Either you can go for single cell isolations, immortalization, successive subcultures. In single cell isolations, you make colonial cell lines. Uh, immortalizations, you make transformed cell lines, uh, leading to production of immortalized cell lines. And then you can produce successive subcultures and lead to senescence at that. Type of cell culture in vitro. So, primary cultures derived directly from animal tissues, uh, embryo or adult uh, culture, either as a tissue explants or single single cells. Initially, heterogeneous becomes overpopulated with fibroblasts. Finite lifespan uh, in vitro retain differentiated phenotypes, mainly encouraged dependent exhibit contact inhibitions. In secondary culture, they derive from the primary cell cultures. Isolated by selection or cloning, becoming a more homogeneous cell populations. Finite lifespan in vitro retain differentiated phenotype, mainly encourage dependent and exhibit contact inhibition. In the continuous culture, uh, they are derived from the primary or secondary culture, immortalized uh, using spontaneously, seriously or propagated in culture, showing an increased growth rate. Homogeneous cell populations, loss of encourage uh, dependency and contact inhibition. Differentiated uh, uh, differentiated phenotypes retained to some degree in cancer cell derived cell lines, very little retained with the transformed cell lines, uh, but they are genetically unstable. So there are various cell morphologies we can see depending on the cell types. Uh, they could be fibroblastic here. The morphology looks like this. And epithelial cells looks like this. Endothelial cells looks like this. Uh, my master thesis was uh, on the cancer cell line at the Max Planck Institute. So there I was working with the Hubert cells, human umbilical uh, vascular endothelial cells. So we were checking metastasis there with the cancer cells on that time. And neuronal cells looks like this, a branch change. You can see very nicely, uh, very nicely all these things are, are, are being, being shown here. So we have discussed type of tissue cultures that is primary, continuous, finite and, and indefinite. Uh, primary is a normally cell culture without any change in the division rate. Uh, further. Uh, finite is the single cell type, roughly 30 times of division and half the growth factors. It is nearly the same as finite, but the cells here can be divided indefinitely by transformation into tumor cells, and they are called cell lines. So, any questions, students? So, we are done with this many types of cell cultures. So there is uh, modula, blastocyst, inner cells, ESC cultures, muscle cell lines, blood cells, neurons, inter interstitial cells, uh, pancreatic, isolate cells, liver cells. So stem cells is also the one there which is helping to produce various other cell of types. After differentiation, they could go to mesoderm, endoderm, ectoderm. 
Mesoderms would help to produce RBCs, skeletal muscle cells, cardiac muscle cells. Endoderm produce pancreatic cells, lung cells, thyroid cells, ectoderm, pigment, neurons, skin cells. Or they could go to cell renal to produce pluripotent stem cells also. This is hematopoiesis uh, shown to you how uh, your erythrocytes, thrombocytes, monocytes, neutrophils, basophils, xenophiles, uh, they are being produced from the B cells and T cells. Um, and this is all happening because of your G2, G1, M phase. So this is your meiosis where I have a G1 phase. Uh, where checking point of cell size, nutrient growth factors are there. It could go to the resting phase also, G0. Then the synthesis phase, DNA synthesis phase. And then the G2 phase to check point of cell size of your application. Then the spindle, so in the mitosis phase, M phase, is assembly check point to chromosome attachment to the spindles is happening. Degree of transformation, so faster growth, anchor development, primogenic in mice. So this is degree of epigenetic changes are shown here. So basic material that you require for cell growth. Um, before we leave, oh, oh. so I cannot open other way. So I have to finish these lectures first, then I will check your questions. So basic materials uh, that that required this is okay. Uh, so you need a substrate or liquid culture flask. Uh, you need nutrient culture media. You need an environment that is CO2 temperature, humidity. You need sterility uh, of a mycoplasma. So that's that's all you 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 required in that case. Uh, cell culture environment uh, includes basal media, uh, maintain pH osmolarity, provide nutrients energy source, inorganic salts, uh, maintain osmolarity. Uh, regulate membrane potential, ions for the cell attachment, enzymes for factors, pH indicator, phenol red, buffers, uh, bicarbonate and HEPAs, uh, like bicarbonate buffered media requires CO2 atmosphere, HEPAs control chemical buffer range, glucose energy sources are required, cell culture environment, so component of basal media requires keto acids, carbohydrates, vitamins, trace elements like zinc, copper, selenium. So supplements are also required like L-glutamine. So these are very essential. Remember them. These slides are quite, though today we are not going through a lot of videos or some virtual labs, but these are very essential for a cell culture lab and microscopy that you will be doing in future. Uh, L-glutamine, uh, essential amino acids, uh, then uh, non-essential amino acids, and EAAA, then load factors and hormones, then antibiotics and antibiotics. So like penicillin, streptomycin, gentamicin, amphotericin. So students, these are the main things that you will be doing in your cell culture on your daily basis. So using NEA while making your, uh, your medium, you adding growth factors to that, you adding antibiotics to them, you adding L-glutamine to it, or it's already have L-glutamine into that, so various supplements are preparing your media. And also there's a fetal calf uh, bovine serum uh, in which you have growth factors and hormones are added, aid cells attachments, binds, neutralized toxins. There are disadvantages uh, that are required, infectious agents, uh, variable compositions, expensive and regulatory issues. So you have to, whenever you're preparing your FBC, FCB, uh, you have to make sure that FCS or FBS is 
that you heat inactivate them. Why? Because uh, destruction of so heat inactivation 50 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. So some viruses could be uh, removed from it, and some immunoglobulins and complements can be removed. Don't overdo it because that will kill the growth factors, hormones and vitamins, and affect the cell growth. So how do we uh, culture cells in the laboratory? So you revive frozen cells population, isolate from the tissues, maintain in, in culture, subculture it, and cryopreserve it. This is the main way of uh, culturing the cells in the laboratory. So this is the uh, flask that with the medium and with the cell culture is there, and you can open it from here, you can move the medium, and with the help of trypsin, you can move your cells. Uh, this is the lab. Uh, culture hood, uh, laminar airflow, where you're working in the clean aseptic conditions. And also this Mr. Frosty, where you can freeze your cells at, for minus 170 degrees Celsius, put them in the nitrogenous, nitrogenous uh, nit nitro liquid nitrogen, or you can try to preserve them with the help of them. Then comes the passaging of your cells. Why to passage? Uh, this is to maintain cell in culture, to increase the cell number of experiments, storage, and uh, to maintain uh, how it looks like to maintain the 70 to 80% influency. So here you can see you have to maintain your cells mostly 70 to 80% confluent like this, uh, not 100% confluent because it will be very tedious and a lot of uh, harmful elements will be start producing in your samples. So 70 to 80 percent confluence cells are the best ones. So you check confluency of cells, move spent medium, wash with PBS, incubate with the trypsin, suspend in serum containing media, and transfer to the culture floss. So prior preservation of cells, uh, you do your passaging of cells, you suspend culture in the serum containing media, centrifuge and aseparate, aspirate supernatant, we suspend cells in 10 percent DSMS so. DMSO and FCS transfer to the cryo wall, freeze at minus 80 degrees Celsius, and transfer to the liquid nitrogen storage time. This is how you cryo preserve your cells. Why you do it? To reduce risk of microbial contaminations or with other cell lines, reduce the risk of genetic drift, morphological changes. So, these all are things I have to maintain. And for how uh, you can do it? You can do pested cells, palate for medium of strain, crab preservants like DMSO could be used, freeze at minus 80 degrees Celsius, or you can use liquid nitrogen at minus 190 degrees Celsius. To count your cells, you can use hematocytometer. Uh, so, here average of cell number multiplied by dilution factor of cell suspension multiplied by 10,000. So, this is how you maintain your manual cell count. Uh, of your cell chambers. Automated cell count, uh, cellometer lets, uh, lets you, so this is automated cell count, you just put your samples into this uh, 20 microliter, then you insert your slide and then you could get the data that how much cells are present automatically by a, a cellometer. So in the ideally uh, they show an exponential, exponential curve. Uh, with the lag phase initially your cell culture, then their exponential phase is there, and they stay will patch you afterwards. So this is how your cells are growing. Uh, please take care of contamination from viruses, mycoplasma, bacteria, yeast. Uh, so maintain water, serum, uh, media, chemical contamination as possible. So please maintain all these things while doing so. So stem cells could be done from the stem cells, you can produce pancreatic cells, somopoietic cells, cardiomyocytes, neurons, and hepatocytes. So that's the major advantage of using stem cells. And common cell lines are for the human cell point of view. Our MCF, uh, HL60, HAC uh, cell line, HALA, primate cell lines, uh, VERO, COS7. So whenever you will start working in the lab, from the life science point of view. So these are the various human cell lines that you will be using on a daily basis. Either you will be using hex cells, COS7, where whichever uh, your lab is preferring to do experiments, uh, you will be continuing with that. 
This is on organ culture is going on here in experiments. So here we have different organs. Uh, I think this is heart. Uh, I'm not sure. This is artificial organs actually. So they have created in the in the pipe to do the experiments with the but they are produced with the help of either stem stem cells uh, or they've been extracted from the mouse itself. So thank you very much, students. So here we can take a five minutes break. And then we start with the last slides. Uh, I will share this with you today also. So basically, I have just explained you various types of cell cultures, uh, how to maintain them, various media being used, uh, what are the conditions that are required to maintain aseptic, how stem cell lines are producing various kind of uh, uh, things. So various uh, things that we are we are searching for. Okay, I will provide to you all these lectures mainly after the presentation is over. Uh, so I can also do that, but that will fail me to to have you in my class. Because you will not come into the class, then you will just want to go through the lectures on your own. And, and what will be the reason for me here? So I will I will maintain to do it after the class is over. Artificial organs. So artificial organs we were creating with the help of stem stem cell lines, uh, heart uh, heart beating rings. So its stem cell line takes some time. It might be taking one month actually. To maintain the cell culture first, to maintain uh, everything in order, so and to put them into the sockets, uh, the, the type of organs that you're looking for, then to grow them in, in with, the, with the, all the nutrient mediums that you're, that you're providing to them, and everything is fine. Only then, at by the end of the month, uh, you can have. Uh, So to maintain that, we have to uh, go for it. So, sir, it is totally like books. Some of us want practical videos for understanding. It is not obvious. So, but these are are basic things that that videos uh, might help. I have some videos for you. Uh, passaging of cells, I will show you. But uh, uh, Debashish, you also agree with uh, Kajal. Uh, but these are the basic things that does not require so much of video teaching. These are the basics part where you are learning about cell culture and light microscope. So these are the, um, if, if possible, uh, we would have take you to the real uh, like light electron microscope at NCBS or I, 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 <laughs> Indian Institute of Sciences. Where you can see them in the live way, so that that will be really nice actually. Uh, but yeah, at the moment um, is is yeah yeah I will I will take care of that. So we we will play one. I want to play one video now actually uh, with the passaging of cells. So how you passage your cells? A small video about it. The growth of cells in culture follows a standard pattern. A leg after seeding is followed by a period of exponential growth called the log phase. Cells should be passaged when they cover the plate, or the cell density exceeds the capacity of the medium. Maintaining log phase growth will maximize the number of healthy cells for your experiment. Before retrieving your flasks from the incubator, sterilize the hood and have all required supplies at hand. Examine your culture carefully for signs of contamination or deterioration. Handle the cells with care during transport.
For adherent cells, remove the spent medium from the flask using a sterile pipette. Rinse the cells with a balanced salt solution such as DPPS. Make sure to use a salt solution without calcium and magnesium as these may inhibit your cell dissociation reagent. After rinsing the cells, remove the salt solution. Each time you aspirate liquid off the cells, place the next solution on quickly. Add your cell dissociation reagent to remove cells from the plate. Use just enough solution to cover the cell sheet. Consider using a gentle dissociation reagent, such as Triple Express, to avoid damaging your cells during dissociation. Make sure that the solution completely covers the cells. You may want to tap gently on the plate to help the cells detach. Use a microscope to confirm the cells have released from the flask. They will start to appear round as they release from the substrate and will move or slide when the flask is tilted. Complete dissociation is necessary. Do not leave the dissociation reagent on too long, especially if you're using a reagent other than triple. You may choose to manually break up lingering clumps by repeatedly pipetting warmed medium over them. A single cell suspension is important to achieve an accurate cell count. If you are using trypsin, the collection medium will need serum, or you'll need to use a trypsin inhibitor to inactivate the trypsin. If you're using triple, inactivation is achieved by dilution alone. No serum is needed. Transfer the cells to a conical tube and centrifuge to remove any residual dissociation reagent. The speed and time of centrifugation will vary based on your cell type. After centrifugation, you should have a well-formed pellet. Remove the medium from the centrifuge tube with a pipette and discard the medium into a waste container. Try not to disturb the pellet. Resuspend the pellet with warm, complete growth medium. Gentle pipetting will disperse the cells to ensure a homogeneous solution of single cells. Remove a small sample for cell counting. Tripan blue is used when counting cells to indicate the ratio of live to dead cells. The stain turns dead cells blue, but healthy cells with an intact membrane will remain white or colorless. Using the microscope, count the total number of cells and the number of dead or blue cells. Based on your cell count, determine how much additional fresh medium to add for optimal seeding density. Add the required medium, mix the cells gently, and pipette the solution into fresh flasks. Cap the vented caps on your flask tightly. If the caps are not vented, cap loosely. This keeps contamination out while allowing adequate gas exchange. Use a north-south, east-west motion to evenly distribute the cells and transport the flasks to the incubator. When passaging suspension cells, you'll begin by removing a small sample from the cell culture flask for counting. You'll follow the same counting procedure for adherent cells using Tripan Blue and either a hemocytometer or the Countess automated cell counter. Based on your cell count, Add additional fresh medium to the flasks. Stay within the minimum and maximum volumes. This is important to maintain optimal air exchange and shaking flow. You may need to split the culture into multiple flasks. Cap the flasks appropriately, depending upon whether they are vented or not, and return them to the incubator. Every three weeks, gently spin the cells, remove the medium, and replace with completely new medium. This eliminates cell debris and metabolic waste. So, I hope uh, it has cleared my presentation that I have showed you in a very nice, uh, simple manner. Uh, I hope you don't need these videos or presentations. You were all uh, quite intelligent.
right? Uh, if how to fuel students, what to fix? Um, so my reason here to speak is just be patient. Everything is done in an order. Uh, you, I, I had taught students, 500 students before also. Uh, but this time I seems it's a lot of impatient students I am having. Those who can't wait and they want everything and they want complaints and they want to uh, have everything and still want to complain. So they are these kind of students. And we are providing you all things uh, in a very uh, sophisticated and simple manner. So please uh, maintain the decor of it. So I will share these videos. I will share this video with you. Positive. So it will take some time. In the meantime, we can start uh, with our another lecture. Uh, in continuation with the tissue culture. So here I will show you just some images. That's the main task to show you part two. Um, cell culture could help you to do uh, gene therapy, embryo culture, primary human and animal cell culture, stem and uh, cancer cells make protein commercials, antibody productions, monoclonals are produced by this way. So cell cultures, why we do it? Tool for the study of animal cells, biology, uh, mimic the in vivo behavior. Okay. So we have discussed all these parts already, primary culture cell versus cell lines, uh, how you can dispose of, split your cells into two parts, passaging we have done, we have done with the contacted inhibition, uh, how contacted inhibited the monolayer former cells, how multilayer inhibited cancer cell lines. So cultures can be initiated uh, from tissues or organs. Uh, tissues or organ fragments, single cell suspensions, choices to be made, uh, disaggregation techniques, a media, culture conditions, selection procedures. So these all have to be maintained. Considerations are to maintain like sensitivity to the uh, mechanical dispersions or enzymes. Cell cell contact may be required for proliferations. Dispersed cells and cultures are vulnerable. Limited span of some cultures has to be maintained. Dispersions of the tissues, uh, mechanical, chemical, enzymatic can be com uh, combinations could be maintained. Uh, using enzymatic could be done with the help of trypsin, prones, uh, collagenase, displays. The cell culture environment, uh, it could be of eight, eight uh, well culture dishes. You can do it, your experiments, you can do it 96 well plates of culture dishes. So both are, uh, are possible. Factors which are affecting your cell cultures are uh, local growth factors, ECM, architecture, cell-cell interactions, circulating proteins, cytokines, hormones. So how to best mimic this in vitro? Uh, culture surface, most adherent cultures, cell cultures require attachment to proliferate, chain charge of the surface, uh, poly -L 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 -C, coating with the matrix proteins, collagen, laminin, gelatin, fibronectin, uh, all they have to be maintained while doing so. Media formulations, uh, we have discussed that already. So this is DMEA media uh, in which you have to maintain with various amino acids, uh, vitamins, inorganic salts and other components. 
so their volume how much is the molecular weight is present how much concentration is present has been shown here in this presentation so media formation includes inorganic ions trace elements amino acids vitamins energy sources serum provides the following in that case basic nutrients hormones and growth factors attachments and spreading factors binding proteins protease inhibitors and ph buffer so these are the various serums uh, containing media uh, what are the components like proteins growth factors amines peptides lipids so you have to maintain a very nice culture with the help of these serums also then comes the gas phase in the gas phase you have to maintain oxygen and carbon dioxide oxygen should be atmospheric should be 20% and at tissue level it should be 1 to 7% whereas the co2 incubator you should have a controlled carbon dioxide humidified uh, 37 degrees celsius maintenance of your culture So pH control, physiological pH has to be maintained 7, pH can affect cell metabolism, growth rate, protein synthesis, availability of nutrients, carbon dioxide act as a buffering agents in combination with sodium bicarbonate in the media. Normal body temperature uh, has to be 37 degrees Celsius, humidity must be maintained at saturating levels as evaporation can lead to changes in osmolarity, uh, volume of media and additives. So we have the ingredients, now let's look at the procedures. Contaminations at the minimum risk, source of contaminations we have discussed like bacteria, fungi, yeast, mycoplasma. Uh, this is class 1 cabinets, preparation of the pr uh, primary cultures. So you're removing the uh, muscles from mice, protect the product only. This is class 2 cabinets, protection of the personal environmental and product laminar flow fluid. So this is the airflow of HEPA filters. Uh, you have air barriers downstairs like this and from the top is a laminar HEPA air filter and there is an exhaust to the HEPA air filter from here and the air is coming in like from here and going out from, from down here and from the back it's going up and from the laminar airflow again the pure air is coming so you are maintaining a very nice air chamber because of that Human shed particles of skins, uh, bacteria, fungi, etc. all the time. Sitting or standing with no movement, wearing a clear, clean, clean room. Uh, will shed approximately around 100,000 particles of to large per minutes. Aseptic technique uh, controlled. Because students, uh, I, I have taught you all these things. So I will try to uh, obtain it in this way so that uh, whatever the things we have done uh, we try to skip uh, whatever things is new we will go with that so aseptic techniques are control environment uh, sterile media reagents avoid uh, aerial contamination of solutions avoid manual contamination of equipments and avoid repeated opening of bottles 70 percent ethanol swab uv irradiations uh, use only disposable equipment once so aseptic techniques uh, use lab coat, gloves, tip does not touch the tube, holding of the tube, how you holding it. So all these things has to be maintained while you are doing aseptic technique. This is pipette, power of battery operated, motorized intake and expulsion of your uh, media in, in air filter. Uh, further transfer of pipette using a disposable and closed plastics. Uh, packaged as a uh, sterile so their contained air is uh, sterile at the end of the your culture so size uh, your polo poliovirus mycoplasma bacteria erythrocytes smallest visible particles human hair diameter so these are all various contaminations that could be present and could come uh, under the contamination part so this could be removed with the help of uh, sterilized uh, filters like this 0.2 micrometer membrane filters so all of, all of a medium you can transfer through them and then you can have very less contaminated media at the end so muscle regeneration uh, is been shown here uh, on the right hand side uh, hemotoxylin, iosin, stain, paraffin, uh, embedded section of mouse model, sterilized after injury. 
and this is in vitro myotubes formed by myoblasts grown in cell cultures for seven days culture viewed uh, on an inverted face microscope so inverted microscopes looks we have discussed them already so here you can see proliferation of your uh, subcultures of high serum media and uh, this is the differentiation and fusions of myotubes formed at seven days in the fusion mediums so this is how the different cultures looks like so here you can see that very fine that they are going up and up and up on each other and making a, a bunch of uh, uh, problematic for the cell culture and it's not so good culture also but this is a nice one this one is nice on the left side having a very plain nice cell culture and it's done in the CC2C, C2C, 12 mouse skeleton muscles, culture cell lines. So cell counting, uh, hematocytometer um, shown to you here like this, media formulations, proliferations, differentiations and fusion media, their respective concentration is written uh, and the fusion media, media change from nutrient rich to nutrient poor. Uh, it's shown here like this by senescence differentiation. So let's see some primary culture uh, fibroblasts. So it looks like this uh, in an eight well slide plate uh, fixed with a dustmin. So we fix them with the dustmin and it shows shows like this. And this is a mouse skeletal muscle cell line H2KB in a 35 millimeter dish fixed and stained for the dustmin, also for the dustmin. And this is dustmin is green and hoax is blue, the nucleus to identify the cell nuclei. So like this one. So that's it for today, I guess. Um, so I will also share some of the uh, two more uh, cell culture basics and fundamentals of cell culture technique. There are two basic books for the same by the company. So you can go through them on your own and just enrich your knowledge with, with respect to it. So I will also share this uh, last presentation. So all in all, we have understood about microscope and cell culture, so which will help us to, to go for further experiments because once we are not uh, understand understand these things uh, about about microscopy and cell culture, it doesn't make sense to go for further experiments to do various biochemistry techniques or uh, or molecular biology techniques. So, yeah. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope things were clear for you today, uh, everything. And thank you for maintaining decor. Uh, nice uh, questions are answering. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, we are open for it now. Question answer session. No, but it's not from the Thermo Fisher. It's from the Jipco. Jipco is a company which do a lot of work with the cell culture so it's from them yeah practical sessions would be nice for them but I will try my best to do a lot of virtual labs uh, so today there is uh, not much virtual labs you can do but that video was enough to tell you about hint of how cell culture is done on daily routine so yeah So thank you everyone, uh, it was a great uh, being with you uh, and uh, we see us Arigato Gosaimas. Who is this guy guy? Is this Japanese? Arigato, I know Japanese a bit. Arigato means bye or thank you I guess. I know a bit German, it say Danke schön. Vielen Dank.
vielen Dank für meine Herren und Herren und Damen für heute äh, für heute Lecture äh, in unserer Eidofabrika äh, Workshop, wo wir lernen viele gesagt mit Mikroskopie und Zell Zellkultur äh, Dinge. Vielen, vielen Dank und viel Erfolg und ich wünsche alles dir ähm, Glückwunsch, äh, viel glücklich und ja, keep smiling. I said that thank you very much for being today, for today's class. So it was nice to have you as my students and I, f I wish you all good luck, a healthy life and keep smiling. Bitte, bitte. Bis später. So some students know Germans here. So that's good. Bitte, bitte. Guten Abend. Gracias. So we have multicultural students here having different languages. Spanish is also here. Gracias. So today's assignment is the same like just Auf Wiedersehen. Yo. Fir milenge. We will see us again. Uh, so today's assignment is uh, just summary of uh, in a two page of each thing. Choose. Namaste. Mercy. It's it's a good to see uh, having. Uh, and a European bye-bye having French, Spanish, German or Indian Alvida, Alvida mere uh, friends mere students, sorry here oh, oh. das ist sehr gut, aber nicht zu frieden it's got removed. Okay, students. Um, I I go now, and see you tomorrow same timing. So tomorrow, what will we doing? Uh, so we'll be doing something with the John Lab. Do we do John Lab? Aha, uh -huh. we will be doing molecular biology techniques, methods in the molecular biology techniques. So it will be an exciting day with a lot of PCRs, uh, methods of cloning, and a lot of things we'll be doing. Okay, tschüss, take care, bye bye. Alvida, firme lenge.